$8 million versus $500,000. That's the brutal cost difference that just exposed Blue Origin's fatal weakness. While Bezos celebrates his crowded engine shop, SpaceX builds one Raptor engine every single day. But here's what's shocking. Blue Origin's BE-4 delivers 245 tons of thrust. SpaceX's Raptor 3, 280 tons, 21% more power. So why does this matter? And how did SpaceX achieve this massive advantage? Let's dive right in. Here's what nobody saw coming. While Blue Origin was celebrating their engine shop feeling crowded with eight BE-4 engines, SpaceX quietly dropped a bombshell that changes everything. $8 million per BE-4 engine, $500,000 per Raptor engine. That's not just a price difference. That's a strategic execution that Blue Origin can't escape from. But here's the part that'll shock you. The cost difference is actually the smallest problem Blue Origin faces. Wait until you see what SpaceX's Raptor 3 just revealed about the future of rocket engines. Picture this. Blue Origin needs seven BE-4 engines for one new Glenn rocket. That's $56 million just for the first stage. SpaceX's Starship? 33 Raptor engines for $16.5 million total. Same mission, same payload capacity, but one company pays three times more for the same result. Now here's where it gets absolutely insane. Blue Origin isn't just losing on cost. They're losing on something far more critical, something that could determine who wins the space race for the next 50 years. Remember when Blue Origin sued SpaceX over Launch Complex 39A? When they challenged the Artemis contract? When they asked the FAIA to limit Starship launches? There's a pattern here. And it's not about legal strategy. Every lawsuit happened while Blue Origin was struggling with the same fundamental problem. They couldn't build engines fast enough to compete. Here's the smoking gun. BE-4 produces 245 tons of thrust. SpaceX's Raptor 3? 280 tons. That's not just 21% more power. That's 21% more payload to Mars. 21% more satellites per launch. 21% more revenue per mission. But the real kicker, the technology gap is exponentially wider than anyone realizes. Let me break down what's happening inside these engines. BE-4 uses something called oxygen-rich stage combustion. Think of it like having a small fire to start a bigger fire. Raptor 3? It uses full-flow stage combustion. Imagine having two perfectly coordinated small fires, creating the most efficient burn possible. This isn't just engineering evolution. This is engineering revolution. But here's the twist that changes everything. When Blue Origin made this design choice, they prioritized safety over scalability. Each BE-4 engine requires precision manufacturing, hand-fitted components, extensive testing, SpaceX designed Raptor for mass production from day one. 3D printing, aggressive automation, standardized parts. Think about it. Blue Origin builds engines like luxury sports cars. SpaceX builds them like Tesla Model 3s on steroids. Both work, but only one can scale to millions of units. Right now, SpaceX produces one Raptor engine every single day. That's 365 engines per year at their current pace. Blue Origin question mark industry estimates suggest they're building dozens of BE-4 engines annually, even with their massive 600,000 square foot Huntsville facility. But here's Elon Musk's target that should keep every competitor awake at night, 30 to 40 Raptor engines per day. Do the math. That's 14,600 engines per year. At current Blue Origin production rates, that would take them over 200 years to build the same number. Both companies promise reusable rockets. But let's look at the actual numbers. SpaceX has landed over 200 Falcon 9 boosters. Some have flown 20 plus times. Their Raptor engines are designed for 1,000 plus reuses. Blue Origin question mark New Glenn still hasn't attempted a single landing. Their BE-4 reusability data? Classified. This isn't just about bragging rights. If you can't reuse your $8 million engines multiple times, you're stuck with disposable costs forever. Here's what Blue Origin doesn't want you to know. Those eight BE-4 engines in their crowded shop, they're for New Glenn's second flight, not first, not third, second. 
This reveals something crucial. Blue Origin isn't building engines for a fleet. They're building them one mission at a time. Meanwhile, SpaceX has hundreds of Raptor engines in production, some for current missions, some for future missions, some for Mars missions that won't happen for years. When SpaceX unveiled Raptor 3, even competitors couldn't believe it. Tori Bruno, CEO of United Launch Alliance, thought SpaceX was trying to fool everyone with the first pictures. It looked like they'd stripped the engine of all its components, but they hadn't. This was the complete engine. Here's what makes Raptor 3 absolutely revolutionary. 280 tons of thrust, 35 tons more than Raptor 2. 3D printed integrated cooling channels throughout no external heat shield required 170 pounds lighter than the previous version, manufactured as single pieces instead of assembled parts. The weight reduction alone is staggering. Previous Raptor engines weighed 3,530 pounds. Raptor 3? 3,360 pounds while delivering more power. SpaceX follows what Musk calls the algorithm. The best part is no part. The best process is no process. Look at the evolution. Raptor 1, a flying spaghetti monster of cables and components. Raptor 2, refined but still complex. Raptor 3, so sleek it looks like a different technology entirely. They didn't just remove parts. They integrated everything. Multiple components became single pieces. External systems became internal channels. Complex assemblies became 3D printed masterpieces. Blue origin question mark. They're still building engines the traditional way. More parts, more complexity, more failure points. Here's where the true scale of this advantage becomes clear. Elon Musk wants to build 1,000 starships per year. Each needs 33 Raptor engines. That's 33,000 engines annually for Mars colonization alone. At Blue Origin's current production rate, building 33,000 BE-4 engines would take them over 500 years. SpaceX's target production rate? They could build that many in less than three years. But here's the real revelation. This isn't actually about rocket engines. It's about two completely different philosophies of space exploration. Blue Origin sees space as an exclusive, premium market. High quality, expensive, limited access. SpaceX sees space as the next mass market. Cheap, accessible, inevitable. The $8 million BE-4 versus $500,000 Raptor isn't a pricing problem. It's a vision problem. Here's what terrifies Blue Origin. What happens when SpaceX's cost advantage becomes so overwhelming that performance becomes irrelevant? When you can launch 10 starships for the cost of one New Glenn mission, does it matter if individual engines are slightly different? When SpaceX can afford to lose engines during flight and still complete the mission, does BE-4's precision manufacturing matter? When Raptor 3 engines can be mass-produced faster than Blue Origin can test BE-4s, who wins the long game? SpaceX just demonstrated something that should terrify every competitor. During recent Starship flights, they lost multiple engines mid-flight and still completed their missions. That's not a failure. That's redundancy through quantity. When you have 33 engines and can afford to lose 10%, you don't need each engine to be perfect. You need them to be good enough and cheap enough. Blue Origin's 7 BE-4 engines lose one and the mission fails. There's no redundancy, no backup, no room for error. The real weakness isn't technical, it's strategic. Blue Origin built a premium engine for today's market. SpaceX built a mass market engine for tomorrow's world. And tomorrow's arriving faster than anyone expected. When NASA awarded Blue Origin that $3.4 billion lunar contract, they weren't just buying a lander. They were betting that Blue Origin could scale up fast enough to compete with SpaceX's mass production model. But here's the question that changes everything. What if they can't? So here's what we've uncovered today. SpaceX didn't just expose Blue Origin's BE-4 weakness. They revealed the entire future of space exploration. $8 million versus $500,000. Mass production versus precision crafting. Mars colonization versus lunar tourism. Two completely different visions. Only one can win. But here's the deeper question that should keep us all thinking. 
What happens when space becomes as accessible as air travel? When rocket engines cost less than luxury cars? When anyone can afford to reach orbit? Because that's exactly where SpaceX's strategy is heading. And Blue Origin? They're still building rockets for today's world, while SpaceX is building for tomorrow's reality. The space race isn't just about who reaches Mars first anymore. It's about who defines how humanity explores the cosmos for the next century. What do you think? Is SpaceX's mass production approach the future? Or does Blue Origin's premium strategy have a place in tomorrow's space economy? Drop your thoughts below. I read every single comment and love hearing your perspectives on where this industry is headed. SpaceX just revealed they've saved $1.8 billion by catching 6 million pieces of metal falling from space. NASA? They watch theirs sink to the ocean floor every single launch. How can SpaceX recover 99% of their fairings while NASA can't save one? Why does this mean NASA can't compete anymore? What's the secret behind this incredible achievement? Let's dive right in. Picture this. While NASA was burning $150 million worth of RS-25 engines into the ocean on every single SLS launch, SpaceX engineers were staring at a different problem. Two massive shell pieces worth $6 million each were falling from space at 300 miles per hour every single launch. Most rocket companies accepted this as the cost of doing business. But Elon Musk had a different reaction when he watched those fairings fall. It's like watching $6 million fall from the sky. And unlike everyone else, he decided to catch it. But here's what nobody talks about. This wasn't supposed to work at all. Every aerospace expert said it was impossible. So why did SpaceX even try? Let's break down what SpaceX was actually attempting. Think about the difference between what they'd already accomplished and what they were trying to do. Rocket boosters? Those are engineering marvels. They have nine Merlin engines, sophisticated guidance computers, grid fins for steering, and landing legs. When a Falcon 9 booster separates, it still has fuel reserves to perform a precise sequence of burns. It can literally fly itself back to a specific landing spot like a guided missile in reverse. But fairings? They're just expensive shells. When these nose cones separate at 60 miles altitude, they become giant gliders with zero control. No engines. No sophisticated guidance systems. No landing legs. Just basic cold gas thrusters for orientation and a prayer that the parachutes deploy correctly. The physics working against them were staggering. Wind patterns at different altitudes would push them miles off their predicted course. Ocean currents made positioning recovery ships nearly impossible. Weather could turn a perfect recovery attempt into a $6 million loss in minutes. But SpaceX had a plan, and it sounded absolutely insane. SpaceX's first attempt was straight out of a Looney Tunes episode. They equipped two specialized ships with giant nets and tried to catch falling fairings midair. Seriously, giant nets. Imagine the complexity. You're trying to catch a refrigerator-sized object with parachutes attached, falling from 60 miles up while you're on a moving boat in choppy seas. The recovery ships had to predict where the fairings would land, position themselves perfectly, and then somehow snag these massive objects out of the air. It was like trying to catch a school bus dropped from an airplane while driving another school bus. The success rate? Under Chugo Procent, the ocean is massive. The ships were relatively small. Even a slight miscalculation could throw the fairings completely off target. SpaceX burned through millions trying to perfect this method. After countless failed attempts, most companies would have given up. But SpaceX made a decision that shocked everyone. They abandoned the nets completely and then they did something even crazier. Instead of giving up on fairing recovery entirely, SpaceX decided to let them crash into the ocean on purpose. On purpose, every engineer said, are you insane? Salt water will destroy everything. But SpaceX had been thinking differently. What if they could design fairings that could survive an ocean landing? They completely redesigned the fairings internal structure. All sensitive components were moved to the top section away from where water would collect. 
They engineered the fairings to land upright like corks floating in water. This single design shift transformed a $6 million loss into a recoverable asset, but nobody believed it would actually work. The aerospace industry was convinced SpaceX was throwing good money after bad. They were about to be proven spectacularly wrong. Today, SpaceX recovers 99% of their fairings. Let me repeat that because it's so unbelievable. 99% success rate. That's not a typo. That's not marketing spin. That's actual operational performance. They've recovered fairings over 300 times, saving $1.8 billion in the process. But here's what's really insane. This recovery program has been so successful that it's now essentially funding SpaceX's next rocket development programs. Think about that for a moment. The money they're saving by not throwing away fairings is being reinvested into building even more advanced rockets. It's a virtuous cycle of innovation funded by recovered hardware. Meanwhile, let's look at NASA's approach. The space launch system burns through $2 billion per launch, throwing away components worth hundreds of millions of dollars. Those RS-25 engines alone cost $150 million each. There are four of them per launch. That's $600 million worth of engines dumped in the ocean every single time SLS flies. It's like buying four Lamborghinis, driving them around the block once, then pushing them off a cliff, and then doing it again and again. But the comparison gets even more stark when you realize what $1.8 billion actually represents in the space industry. Here's what most people don't realize. Fairing recovery was actually harder than landing rocket boosters. Way harder. Boosters have active control throughout their return journey. They can steer themselves and land precisely where they're supposed to. Fairings are passive objects that rely entirely on parachutes and basic thrusters. It's like the difference between piloting a helicopter and trying to land a paper airplane in a hurricane. Yet SpaceX cracked the code while every other aerospace company insisted it was impossible.